Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show will begin in five minutes. Let's make some noise! Let's make some noise!
Let's do this! Hello there, Richie. Hey, Hello. how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Natalie? I'm good, thank you. And how is everybody else out there doing today? It's great to be back. Welcome to another episode of SOC, where we talk about everything and anything uh, straight out of camera. Um, it's great to see that so many of you have tuned in, and I am really chuffed that we are on time. Did you yeah, see yeah, that yeah. we went live straight at seven o'clock sharp? <laughs> um, it's wonderful to be back and it's great to uh, be here with you again uh, for an awesome chat and a nice, um, yeah, what's going to be really interesting because we have lots of awesome uh, photographs that we are going to look at today that all of you have uploaded and um, we are excited. Uh, to get the show on the road and yes, in addition and thanks, to uh, uh, special not to interrupt you <laughs> it's i just want to give a special thanks to everybody who's tuning in and uh taking time out of your busy morning or afternoon or evening or wherever it is in your part of the world to uh, join us for an hour or so as uh, we talk about film simulation recipes and travel photography and all that so we're very glad that you're you all tuned in and are here right now Yes, and I can hear that you're planting a seed, Richie. You said for about an hour or so. So um, <laughs> we are determined. Today is a Q&A show, so we are determined to not to keep you too long, but we've got lots of interesting images to look at, so we will do that. And also, we have, as always, prepared a poll. I'm not. I am uh, just pressing a lot of buttons um, around me, so I am uh, wanting to, uh, yeah, just to let you know that I'm that I'm doing that. <laughs> yes, but yeah, here we Natalie's, are. Uh, Natalie's doing a lot of the uh, the uh, off the air kind of stuff. Uh, the the product she's production manager as well as. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the engineer, I don't know how many hats you're wearing right now, Natalie, but uh, yeah, just, just uh, I guess, have a little uh, grace uh, for Natalie as she does all the behind the scenes stuff while in front of the scene. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, all these 10 fingers are used today. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, anyway, sorry, I just noticed that in the previous scene I had us muted. Uh, so I will make sure to rectify that. Sorry about that. Uh oh. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So um, here we are. Uh, hope um, that you're all um, ready for um, the show. We uh, want to make sure uh, that a lot of us um, can watch tonight. So if you have anyone who you think might be interested in this, why don't you go and invite them now and they can join us. And yeah, the more the merrier, as they say. And um, what else? Um, <laughs> let's see um, to check about some comments, right? 
Sure. Uh, let's have yeah, and then go back to the uh, audio issue. You know, whenever we're doing a live show, there's always the potential for unexpected uh, technical difficulties to show up. They seem to always happen. So that's that's part of the fun. You know, the, the serendipity of, of a live program is that you never know what's going to happen, uh, good or bad or, or any of that stuff. Yes, absolutely. Um, and yeah, a quick hello to everyone. Um, there's Thomas tuning in. He hasn't been here for a while. Thank you so much for tuning Hi, in. <laughs> and David is saying good evening, which is great. Good evening. It's nice to have you here. We also have, hold on a second, there is Robert greeting everybody else, and Dan is also here with us. Robert and Dan. <laughs> and Pilot Pete. Oh, hi, so Pilot nice Pete. To, nice to have you with us. Also, a um, all-round greeting from Jerry. <laughs> it's great to, to see you here. Um, yeah, it's Hello. wonderful to have so many of you watching. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Philip Garcia is also here. He's watching from Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, yeah, she's on the other side of town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Can... <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, well, it's really cold here, so I'm glad that uh, you can sit there in a T-shirt. I'm a little bit jealous, but that's fine. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Um, and uh, Robert has found to watch live. Um, thank you so much. That is really good news. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, thank you all for um, being with us today, for finding the time and to, you know, to greet us in the comments is really great. And hold on a second. Yeah, and, and I love seeing the chat between each other in the comments, you know, <laughs> this uh, community yes. building that, that's going on. Yes, you're keeping you're keeping me busy. So I'm trying to um, <laughs> get to the get to the comments as quickly as possible. There's Enrico saying hello from Italy. Uh, it's um, great. He's uh, still in the right. mountains. Uh, that is. I, that I is hope amazing. he's uh, more listening than watching as he's driving down the mountain. Oh gosh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> And we have Joe, who's also tuned in. Hello, Joe. Thank you so much Hello. for being here with us. Um, absolutely uh, wonderful um, to have such a great audience today. Yeah. I'm super excited. That is really nice. Well, then let's dive in, Richie. We yeah. have um, had a question that we asked in the, in the pre-show, as always. And this time, I'm not giving away the answer straight away. <laughs> I'm feeling very accomplished this time. And uh, we want to know... Um, which is the world's most photographed landmark? Since we're talking about travel photography, we thought, you know, let's um, get a bit of uh, trivia going and let's see if you have any ideas what this could possibly be. And, um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm so in, uh, in the United States, there's a lot of heavily photographed landmarks you think of like uh statue of liberty in new york or the grand canyon or something like that maybe maybe uh someplace in las vegas a lot of people go there uh san francisco um maybe the golden gate bridge um, things like that is what comes to my mind um okay. i don't know but this is we're talking about the world here not just you know america so it could be you know great wall of china or something like that so so uh, I know you know the answer, but what would be your <laughs> guess if you didn't know the answer? Well, we have a guess from Robert. He's saying Tour Eiffel, um, the Eiffel Tower. And we have another guess uh, from Joe, um, who also guesses uh, the Eiffel Tower. And I, yeah, I do know the answer. <laughs> so if I didn't know the answer. Uh, Stanley is thinking Times Square, New York. It's actually, that's also quite a good guess. Um, yeah, what would, I, what would I guess? I do think I would guess a, a place somewhere in, um, in the States. Um, Pilot, is, Pete is thinking somewhere in Rome. Yeah, maybe something like 
maybe the Colosseum or or maybe the Leaning Tower of Pisa or something in Italy. Um, hmm. Yeah, but the Grand Canyon could also be a really good guess. Yeah, a lot of millions of people visit it, you know, and you gotta imagine they're all taking pictures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Dan thinks the Kodak Tower. <laughs> well, if he goes into his collection of images, I'm sure it's the most um, photographed landmark in his collection. Well, um, no, think about this for a second. It, all the times that Kodak made a new camera, did a new batch of film, and they had to test it, maybe inside the Kodak Tower in, in the testing department is the most photographed. <laughs> There's, there's some wall or something that was always used to make sure that quality control, the eh, possibility. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. We're getting very yeah. inventive here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, no, I don't think it's the test charts, but um, <laughs> I'm sure they've been photographed often. That's great. Mm. So um, let's, let's give you guys uh, a couple more minutes um, to or a couple more guesses. If there are any more, any more brave people have any other ideas, what's your guess? Uh, there's absolutely nothing to be won <laughs> um, apart from maybe a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of good fun and a little pride. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it, as always, thank you for being such great sports to, to humor, I don't know, to humor us maybe. And maybe to be open to learning some not very important information um, on the side as well. All right. Um, but I think there are no more guesses um, from anyone over here. So shall we reveal what is the yeah, world's uh, most photographed landmark? Let's see if anybody got it right. <laughs> All right. There we go. It is indeed. <laughs> yeah, so, it's funny uh, how Robert and Joe got it right. Is that yes? Uh, yep, that is correct. Yes, we had we had Joe who guessed the Eiffel Tower, as well as Robert. So congratulations! Yep. Thank you very much, and thank you for playing. <laughs> yep. And now that we're all warmed up, um, I think we are ready to jump into today's show. So what we have got lined up for you today, as always, it's a Q&A show. So we are going to um, a recap about what we did at the beginning of the month, where we talked extensively, extensively <laughs> about travel photography for a whopping two hours. So if you haven't seen the show yet, go do yourself a favor and, and go and have a look. Uh, we have... Um, had a lot of suggestions, a lot of things to say about travel photography. And we also recommended some recipes and as always also, um, you know, given a challenge. So we're going to look at all of that and we are going to then look what you all created with those recipes. And um, yeah, so let's do that, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> lots of... Lots of different buttons to press, and here we are. We are talking about travel photography. And before we uh, dive into uh, the meat of it all, we are going to uh, recap. We're going to then look at viewers' images. That's always the highlight for us, um, because mm -hmm. we really enjoy to see what you'll uh, create with these images, right? Yeah, that's, but, that's probably my favorite part of all of it. <laughs> it's uh, just seeing your guys' pictures. They're, they're just really amazing. Yes, they are. We have, however, a brief, quick news flash uh, that we want to share with you. Um, and um, I'll hand over to Richie. For, yeah, um, so, so the latest uh, Fuji X Weekly app update for uh, iOS for Apple uh, bring support to the Apple Watch. So if you got a Apple Watch on your wrist uh, and you uh, update to the latest version of Fuji X Weekly, which your phone may have already done for you, 
Um, you can now use the Fuji X Weekly app on your Apple Watch. So take you have recipes right on your wrist. You don't even have to take your phone out. Um, there's not a lot of new functionality. It's just a different convenient way to uh, find recipes and look at recipes. But one of the cool features that is unique to the watch is that uh, you can see your five most recently viewed uh, film simulation recipes. So if you were browsing and you opened one up and then you're like, oh, maybe, and then you go to maybe look at a few more, two or three others, then you're like, no, I want to go back to the first one. Well, maybe you're not sure which one that was. So your watch will tell you. Um, random recipes works really well on there. So that's a fun thing you can do on the go. Uh, if, you, if you're with a group, you could do like three in a row and it'll remember each of those three. Um, and, and, you know, as your five most recently viewed. Um, so, yeah, it's just a cool way, cool new way uh, for Fuji X Weekly to take over your tech. Uh, you know, so you have <laughs> widgets, you have the watch, you know. You, <laughs> it's just it's just a fun, fun new feature. So if you have an Apple Watch and an, and an iPhone and you're using the Fuji X Weekly app, you know, go check that out. This is very cool. I, I have to disclaim that I do not have an Apple Watch. <laughs> yet um, I um, haven't really really felt the need for it but you've definitely strengthened the case and uh, yeah it shall find itself onto my wish list and I'll see and I would uh, very much like to try that out because it sounds like a ton of fun and um, yeah it's very handy I mean at the same time as much as it's you know a fun feature especially for us here when we don't necessarily always want to run around with our phone in our hands and our pockets, but tucked away safely. That would be really cool to just have well, it accessible on our, on our wrists. Well, it actually came in handy uh, when we were uh, building it and testing it and everything where a phone got left in a car and, uh, but uh, thankfully the recipe that, um, was needed um, was available right on the wrist so uh yeah it there's definitely there's definitely times that it's that it comes in handy for sure yes i can i can totally i can totally see it and from from my perspective and i'm sure there are plenty other use cases where this could be useful so thank you for thinking of us and for constantly um adding uh, some more and building out this awesome app and keeping us busy and wanting us to buy even more tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you didn't well, have Christmas enough already. Is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But now let's head on over to uh, the um, beginning of the show. We want to have a look uh, at what we did um, in the last show in case you've missed it. And like we said, we're going to look at all the images that uh, you've submitted and we have a bit of time at the end of the show for some Q&A. So if you have questions, if you have comments, please don't hold back, um, send them through to us. If you have a question that you definitely want an answer to, you can help us by putting a Q in front of it. So then we, we I can filter <laughs> um, for those questions. And I'll make sure that I prioritize those. If we don't get to those questions during the show, uh, we will, you know, do that towards the end uh, for sure. And while we're looking at images, you're more than welcome also to, you know, comment and give your input and a bit of applause because who doesn't like that? And we, you know, we can go back and forth in between those. Yeah, and we're all here for you and for each other. So, you know, don't hesitate, don't hold back on whatever questions you have or comments you have or anything like that. So, just uh, let it rip. Type type it out, and uh, and uh, and we look forward to seeing the comments and questions that you have. Yes, most definitely. And uh, if you have missed uh, the show at the beginning of the month. We talked about what travel photography is. We gave some gear tips. Uh, we talked quite extensively about how to prepare for a trip and all the things to consider to make your photography on a, a holiday a bit easier and shared food for thought as always. So 
dive back into that show if you haven't yet and make sure that you catch up with all the good stuff. Yeah, if you miss that episode and you're going to be traveling soon, you want to take a few couple hours, I guess, out of your out of your time and and use that as part of your uh, travel preparation because there's a lot that we covered, a lot of great things that we talked about, and I think it'll be helpful to you. Yes, we think so. And of course, we gave you a couple of recipes that we recommended that we think look and uh, work really well for travel photography. And we just want to make sure that we're on the same page. And, you know, that's why we're having another look at those. And, um, yeah, one of, I think one of everyone's favorites or a big favorite, as it turned out, uh, was 1970s summer. It is a really classic recipe. So a lot of people like that and shared a lot of the images with us. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to hear your feedback, too, if. If you use that recipe and really liked it, you know, let us know. If you use that recipe and didn't like it, you know, let us know. Uh, I, what I appreciate about it is just has that uh, nostalgic uh, uh, rendering that uh, doesn't look so digital. You know, a lot of a lot of pic digital pictures look digital. Uh, we're kind of oftentimes going for a more analog aesthetic, and that's one of those recipes that really does a good job at delivering it. Oh, absolutely, yes. I love it, and I'm sure everybody is agreeing with that. Uh, but the other recipes are also um, really nice, and a lot of you enjoyed those. Elite Chrome 200, uh, a lot of people um, shot a couple of images with uh, the Fuji Chrome Provia 100F. Uh, was also amongst a recipe that you know got shared, and Coda Color VR was a great favorite amongst a lot of you guys as well. So we are going to have a look um, at all your images and we're going to talk a little bit more about the qualities of those so that you can really see um, how they render uh, the JPEGs differently. And um, also, um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's have a look at that uh, when we're actually looking at the images. And also what we wanted to know from you is... Um, yeah, how you think, um, you know, our recipe collection is going and selection and, and uh, your experience with that. So this is one of the questions in the poll. So we want to remind you again that the poll is open. And you can go uh, right here <laughs> and scan um, this QR code and participate in the poll if you haven't yet. We're keeping it open until after the show, so no need to worry. You can still take your, take your comment and make your choice and let us know. We want to know. <laughs> yes, we do want to know, absolutely. <laughs> And apart from the recipes, we also um, gave you a challenge. So not only do we want you to shoot with the recipes, whether you're traveling or not, but we want you to experience the different recipes that we recommend. And obviously, if you're traveling, all the better. Some of you definitely did. And in addition to that, we, thought, we always think, you know, if you want to level up your photography, we give you a bit more of a challenge. So we um, have asked you to create images in light that's not necessarily the greatest light to shoot in and then see what the recipe does and help uh, to improve uh, your results. And uh, lastly, we asked you to take a photograph uh, that you then go and print. So actually going out there with the intention to create an image that you then go and print. So we will see how that went. Yep. And uh, what's great about, uh, you know, shooting with different recipes, we used to do just one recipe of the month. Uh, we've increased it to four. Uh, we hear, we've been getting a lot of feedback for a while now about people uh, telling us that uh, they used one of the recipes because we showcased it and asked you guys, challenged you guys to, to use it. Uh, and, and the feedback has been, I would have never have used that recipe on my own. I wouldn't have picked that one. But because you guys challenged us to to shoot with it, we did. I loved it. You know, we get that fairly frequently. 
Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And also, if you see sample images, you all of a sudden, you know, see a variety of um, moments when the recipe was actually used. And that helps, obviously, to really get an idea to what this recipe is like. And that, um, yeah, is hopefully inspiring. So if that's what uh, we are able to create, then that's great. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, let's do this. Let's have a look at what you have created with all the different recipes that we have given you. So we're starting out with having a look at 1970s summer, which was uh, such a popular recipe with everyone. And I yeah, think and, uh, you like it a lot as well, Richie, right? Yeah, I do. And, and this image here kind of demonstrates it. Uh, if not for the clothes that people are wearing, um, you could easily think that this picture was captured a long time ago. Yes. Um, I think my favorite part of it is actually the, uh, the out of focus bird. That's a little bit of a surprise in the foreground there on the left side. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it would it'd almost be easy to overlook it, you know, cause you're, you're looking at the beautiful blue ocean and stuff and the people sitting around enjoying their day at the beach and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it's a fun little surprise. Yeah, very true. Just for you, Richie, your surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Richie likes a good surprise in a photograph. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you so much, Stephen, for submitting this image. And then we also have a, a 1970 summer edition from Joe Collins. A little bit of sightseeing uh, in a mm -hmm. very popular place, which is great. Um, yeah, and to everyone in the audience who's watching, you are welcome to give us your comments to the images, um, anything that you like or that, you know, either the image itself or maybe the recipe is um, something that you want to remark on or you have a question about it, uh, where it was, or if it is your image on the screen and you can give us a little bit of a backstory, please don't hold back. We would love to hear some more details about all those different images. So thank you, Joe, uh, for this awesome capture. Yeah, I love the reflections in it. Yes. Sorry, do you want me to go back, Richie? No, no, no. I was just saying I, I, that, yeah. that's probably my favorite part of it is that all the reflections. It's a yes. lovely image. And yeah. then uh, uh, Peter uh, sent us this one, another uh, beach shot. You know, it's... Uh, you get a good idea of what uh, 1970 summer does for a, a summer day at the beach. Um, but uh, yeah, just the blues, how it renders them is just really lovely. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely 1970s. For yep. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then here is a capture from Bjorn, um, a different, different kind of image, a very interesting um, scene, uh, very lovely indeed. And these lovely blue skies uh, that this recipe does so well, just makes it a really nice looker. Thank you. Oh yeah, that, that seems like something you would find maybe in a magazine or on the wall of a business or something, you know, it's a pretty cool shot. Yes, nice one. And here's another one from Stephen, who clearly likes 1970s summer a lot uh, because he uh, shared um, yeah, all his images in that uh, recipe, which is great. And it's a nice, to, to me, it's a nice touristy scene. So it goes really well with our travel theme and nice, nice, busy, vibrant scene that he captured there, which is great. Yeah. Alrighty, oh, and uh, one more in 1970s summer, uh, which is another one from Joe. And um, parts yep. parts of this image kind of like it reminds it. It looks almost um, almost like a postcard, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. the quality is yeah. just and the framing and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the, the quality of the color. So when you're shooting with, with 1970s summer, I think this is what you can expect and this is what, you, what you'd go for is this definitely very uh, retro look. Yeah, is... and, and, and the, uh, 
And the other thing, I guess, to mention about it, and all these pictures here, you see that it's used on a, a sunny day, right? And that's really where the recipe shines, I think. Um, if it's bright and sunny, um, even midday, but it could be, you know, golden hour anytime uh, when the sun is out, it's a good recipe to use. But if you start using it, you know, indoors, um, in artificial light or something like that, uh, nighttime, it's, it's not going to do as well, you know. But for a, for a sunny day, um, and I saw Stanley's comment there, it is, it is top shelf. So yes. yeah. there you go. <laughs> yes, it is. And a nice way to, to end um, the 1970s summer uh, collection. Um, I wanted to say, I don't think we've mentioned, uh, we always uh, post a slideshow as well. Uh, with all the images that we've received um, this uh, time around, we will show them after the show. And yeah, so there you can dive in and look at all the images again. Uh, the images that we have chosen are only a selection of images. Uh, we have chosen quite a few already, but there are too many uh, for um, us to look at all of them during the show. So do stick around after the show and uh, watch out for the slideshow so you can really indulge in all the different images that we've received, which have been outstanding again. Yeah, and we'd love to show all of them during the show, but it's just so many. <laughs> yes, they are too many. Um, we're moving on to Elite um, Chrome 200. So a very different, yeah. very different recipe uh, because um, I feel it's more versatile, it's more um, forgiving for more different kind of scenes. Um, how would you yeah, describe so, it, Richie? Well, the film itself, Elite Chrome 200, was a kind of a budget version of Ektachrome uh, that was kind of just like a consumer grade film. It, it, did, it didn't produce as like vibrant or, or punchy colors as some other slide films. Um, it wasn't as, you know, beautiful, if you will, as, as like Kodachrome, but, um, but it was more versatile because it was made for the, the, the amateur or the, the hobbyist or, uh, the person maybe who was taking just pictures, uh, at Disneyland or whatever. Uh, so the recipe kind of mimics the film in this regard. And, um, and it's, uh, it's more of a general purpose, I guess you would say general purpose uh, mm. recipe. Um, and Carl explaining his, um, his uh, thoughts on it, it's uh, uh, lightness and somewhat painterly qualities. And I would agree with that. And, um, and this is a good, uh, Carl's image here is a good example of what you can get with it. I like how it demonstrates the blues and the greens and even the yellows a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Apart from the fact that the image itself is, you know, really well captured. The composition is great. Mm -hmm. I love the, the the lines and the fence and everything. And then the the toned down colors really put you into a different time, uh, put me in a different yeah. time. So maybe you share that with me as well. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's a great pleasure. Lovely photograph. Thanks, Carl. Mm -hmm. All right, and we have something completely different, um, which is so nice to see because it shows off the versatility of the recipe when you're shooting indoors. And um, uh, this uh, image has been submitted by Simon, and um, I am very, very proud when I see this image, apart from the fact that the capture is really fantastic. Um, but yeah, this it's beautiful is. Capture. <laughs> yes, it is. It's really dramatic with the with the lines of the tiles, and then mm -hmm. um, the amazing um, image in the in the ceiling. This is mm -hmm. actually the uh, Baroque Castle in Mannheim, my hometown, <laughs> and okay. it is quite spectacular. It is the second. I'm boasting now. <laughs> it's the second <laughs> largest Baroque um, castle in Europe straight after Versailles. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> yes, and he's clearly been there on holiday. So it's a great travel photograph and a wonderful uh, capture. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, nice, 
uh, definitely very nice. And Stanley thinks so as well. He's also been there. I don't know if he remembers. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And moving on to um, another outdoor image by someone who's submitted for the first time. I'm very excited. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> yes, hold on a second. We can do, we can definitely do an applause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we obviously, I think it's really great how some people have been like submitting month after month and you guys mm -hmm. are so loyal and submit your images. But it's also really excellent to see that someone's new is uh, joining us. So mm -hmm. there you go. And really, these shows uh, require your participation for them to be great, uh, whether tuning in live, uh, you know, commenting, submitting images, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're doing to participate in these shows. It's without you, these shows wouldn't be even half as good. If it's just me and Natalie up here talking about nothing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. we, we would have fun, but it wouldn't be yeah. anything like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it's. It's really great. <laughs> We're having too much fun, Richie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, moving on uh, to another awesome image uh, by Carl again in an mm -hmm. Elite Chrome 200. I think um, this this image is so inviting, and the colors are so beautifully um, invited. Yeah, I just I just want to walk through that field of flowers. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and I was having a discussion with Natalie about this during the, the pre-show, but I was thinking about it a little more, and it really reminds me of uh, when you get like the you know back in the day you would get all sorts of photography magazines, you know, and they still exist, but not as prevalent as they once were. But you know, they'd have like a like a section of, of viewer images or not viewer images, but you know, subscriber images or whatever, and then. They would uh, have like photo contests or something like that. And it, and it seems like something that would be, you would find in those pages, um, in, in those sections. So I, I think it's really cool. Yes. Uh, um, I absolutely love it. It's so, it's so simple yet so captivating and mm -hmm. definitely absolutely timeless. Thank you, Stanley. That's exactly what it is. Nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> Thank you for spoiling us, everyone, with all your beautiful photographs. And here's another one from Simon. And um, yeah, he's really making my heart sing because this is another scene from Mannheim. This is the symbol of Mannheim, the, whole, the, the, the water tower. And um, I love how he's captured shooting through, um, you know, all the green and leaves and, and everything for that. Trying so. to use layers. And mm. I, I think that's fun when you, when you do that uh, and try and uh, just find some element that maybe other people would completely overlook, but you're just using it to add a layer to the image. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It makes your eye travel as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And um, with that said, uh, we are moving on to the next recipe in the lot, and that's Fujigram Provia 100F. Yeah, so Jonathan Martin sent us this one, and I, I absolutely love this image. It's a uh, Seattle skyline um, from the Bremerton Ferry. When I was a kid, I took that ferry, but the skyline looked much different <laughs> uh, back then. Uh, but what I love about this picture is I have some uh, Fuji Chrome Pro Via 100F slides that from the actual film that I uh, captured in downtown Chicago and the blues and the way it renders the, 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 the skyscrapers and stuff. It's just so uncanny. It's just so familiar. Uh, it looks uh, pretty much identical. So that's, that's really cool. Yes, very nice. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I mean, the the blues of the sky and then the reflections mm -hmm. of that quality of color in the buildings is really mm -hmm. awesome. It's very nice, clean and clean and retro. I absolutely yeah. love it. Thank you, Jonathan. 
And then also a submission from Enrico, who's hopefully no longer driving. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, and this is a typical example where Fujichrome uh, Provia 100F really pushes the blues. You can see it in this deep, saturated ocean, and then also the yeah. sky. It's what I really enjoy about this um, this recipe a lot. And then you have the surprise of the little people in the distance. <laughs> Just for you, Richie. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's planting little surprises for Richie in their images. And if you don't know this yet, uh, there's a bit of inspiration for you for the next uh, set of uh, challenges. Maybe we should make that one of the challenges. Plant a surprise for Richie in your image. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. We should. I think we should. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's very cool. They look absolutely tiny compared to this humongous boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. You almost wonder if they're, you know, because it's perspective, but because of their position to the boat, they yeah. almost look like little people, right? <laughs> like you put them in your hand. <laughs> hmm, maybe they are. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, right. And then another capture from Hugh. Uh, this is mm -hmm. also a nice definitely a nice travel scene and on the road uh mm -hmm. pit stop kind of a picture yep. yeah i like taking here. those kind of pictures yes you get uh, where you got your burger at or whatever you gotta yeah snap a couple pictures while you're there because yes. you can't wait to take pictures i mean that's that's what it is <laughs> you know you, you're really wanting the landmark or whatever you're traveling to you want to capture pictures of that but you're just so excited that the gas station and the burger shop and everything that you're stopping at along the way, you're pulling out your camera and taking pictures. Yes. And I maybe think... I'm the only one who experiences that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. I think it's part of what, what travel photography is all about because you want to capture mm -hmm. your own, own experience of, you know, whatever really monumental places that you visit and, Maybe you had an amazing burger or some great milkshake or whatever at this place and you want to yeah. remember it like that. And I also think that uh, sometimes these kinds of photographs also help you um, find really the qualities of the recipe and what, what the recipe really makes. So you can, you know, just really test uh, all the different results that you get. So that's, you know, a very, very good example of that. And speaking of monumental, on the yeah. other hand, <laughs> it really captures uh, landscapes also extremely well. And I, I love this. Um, I love this image and the angle of uh, this very well known landmark, at least in the States. Um, yeah, you're telling me that you actually visited that. Yes. It's a very long time ago, but I have. And um, since I'm also a bit of a, a movie nerd, I, mm -hmm. I had to go there uh, when I was in the States. And I had to go and I had to um, do this very touristy thing where you camp at the bottom of the mountain and then you watch um, uh, the, um, the movie and... You told me Close yesterday. Close encounters of the third kind. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I only I yeah. only know the German title, but yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I could imagine they still do do this every night. They watch. They show this movie, and um, yeah, it's an interesting encounter. So thank you for making me reminisce, the Jonathan. It means something. It's important. Yes. Very. And um, Stanley wants to know if um, he's the only one that's thinking that the mountain has been washed clean. Uh, no, it's, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it, is, it, um, is it a volcano, remnants of a volcano or something? Oh, probably. Yeah. Probably. I, I, I've heard, and I, I don't know that there's any scientific basis for this at all. I have no idea. I've done like zero research and, but, uh, some people I've heard some speculation that, uh, it's a giant tree stump that has been, uh, uh what would you call it? Petrified. 
Oh, petrified okay. giant tree stuff. It looks okay. like it, but I mean, yeah. I, it's probably most likely it's probably a, the a, a volcano with the remnants of, of one. I would yes, I would imagine. But it's really weird because it it just sticks out of the. Yeah. It, there's nothing really like it around it in the scenery. Yes, and I think it kind of like has been washed clean because there used to be you know something around it and then it was eroded so in a way it is so <laughs> and then we're moving on to our last recipe of that uh the one that uh, we recommended and that is coda color vr mm -hmm. and this first image is uh was submitted by Bo de lange who is still on the holiday day um, he shared this with us while he was traveling. So I think that's really cool. Thank you so much for letting us in on this most spectacular landscape. <laughs> this is very nice. Oh, and he actually let us know that he would not have captured this, um, this scene with Coda Color VR hadn't it been for the challenge. So I thought that was really interesting because it uh, comes back to what you said earlier, Richie, that uh, we look through these images and we showcase different kinds of recipes and that seems to be giving people the idea to actually shoot with it now that they've seen how it was used in different uh, situations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I really like that. And it sounds to me like Bo would have probably, yeah, rather shot it with something else and then not created this amazing shot with it. Yeah, and what makes this image, uh, besides that it's an incredibly beautiful landscape, but it's that you have this tent contrasted with the dark mountain behind it. And it just draws your eyes right to that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Very nice. I want to go camping now. <laughs> <laughs> well if it's there you know that would be that'd be pretty amazing yes yeah very cool but maybe we'll go road tripping with dan ellen yeah. instead he captured yeah, it's this very classic cool. yeah very classic uh you know you have the old uh gas pump and the you know the trading post behind it so it's yeah it's pretty cool yes it's stunning i absolutely love it and if you know me i'd love a good red um, in yeah. <laughs> different kinds of recipes. So, <laughs> so that's a nice showcase of what Coda Color VR does with red. Or if you want to look into the sky, mm -hmm. uh, like Bjorn did in this amazing capture, then um, yeah, then you can also see the quality of the sky that uh, you can get in. I guess more like a daylight scenario. Yeah, it's a, such a great use of design and uh, leading lines and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of abstract. And again, there's a surprise. You know, let's talk about surprise the bird <laughs> in, the, in the in the one triangle. So yes. yeah, it's a super cool image. Yes, I wonder. I wonder how long um, uh, Bjorn was standing there, uh, or if that just happened to be there, or if, if he was waiting. Uh, for a bird to fly past. But um, whichever way, it is a really cool image. So thank mm -hmm. you. And um, this is also uh, the last of our examples uh, for the recipe. So thank you everyone for submitting all these amazing images. And um, I think they're really, you did, outdid yourselves, guys. I think we have an amazing selection and collection of um, images. Yeah, thank you so much for sending those to us to, to share with all of you. So it's really, it's really cool to see them and really cool to be able to share them. Yes, yeah, most definitely. And um, yeah, the spotlight's on us now, Richie. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> did, we, did we do as well as the, as the viewers did? That's the, that's the question. Because yes, we don't just ask you, we don't just challenge you guys to shoot with the recipes. We actually use them ourselves as well. Yes. In our parts of the world, I don't know if it's a worldwide saying, uh, we say we try to put our money where our mouth is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Or rather, we put our camera where our eye is. Oh, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Okay, there we go. Something like that. Alrighty-ho. 
Um, let's start off with Richie's most favorite recipe of the recommended recipes. And it is yeah. 1970s summer. Yeah, so... <laughs> so sound effect. Yes. Yeah, so I didn't do a lot of traveling um, during this month, but uh, uh, this is uh, Tempe, Arizona, for anybody who's familiar. and Just uh, happened to stumble across this uh, duck boat in the pond uh, between these two bridges, between a couple of trees, uh, right at uh, sunset. And... Uh, it was it turned out really well i was very happy with this picture yes i think i think i can feel this image i feel like i'm strolling in the evening along it's kind of like mm -hmm. a nice nice warm balmy um summer's evening and mm -hmm. yeah i'm on my way to um the other side there which is possibly where there's restaurants and stuff and i can mm -hmm. i can smell and f and feel this image it's really really nice yep. i love the mood well done. <laughs> and contrasty, a little bit of very blue, um, cold uh, winter air back here in South Africa. <laughs> um, and I, like I've already mentioned, I like how this recipe just pushes the blues. And I think for a good uh, winter sky, uh, it does really well it was really cold that morning <laughs> yeah it, i just love the sun star in it I, I, it's such a great job on that yeah thank you yeah i enjoy playing with stars <laughs> so yeah and and for anybody well so here's the big challenge i think for me anyways with sun stars is that i always seem to have a dusty sensor so you put the aperture up to f16 or whatever you need to get the get a good sun star uh, it always ends up showing the little dust spots everywhere yes yeah keep your lens clean <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right yo and over to the challenges so the first challenge was uh that we well the second one really that we wanted to see how recipes um, assist in giving images that are captured in difficult light or unfavorable light, how we called it. Um, yeah, so this yeah. was uh, like drab, overcast, um, you know, you go to the beach and you hope for a sunny day kind of thing. And it's and it's not, uh, it is, it's just, uh, um, I had somebody tell me that, uh, you know, I could just, I could, I could just go into software and replace the sky with a nice sunny sky or whatever, but don't want to do that. Uh, I, I want to make it work and get a good image, even when the, the weather's not cooperating and, and, and stuff. And so I thought Elite Chrome 200 did pretty well. Yes, it did. And uh, it did more than just pretty well. It also made this guy who's wearing this Blue, really blue shirt and this really red jacket <laughs> jump out um, out of I mean he's just dressed in all these opposing different colors to everything <laughs> all the tones that in the, in the rest of the image I'd absolutely love it I think it's cool he Thanks. looks a bit cold though <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah. and he's got a Nikon camera for anybody who's wondering oh dear no wonder <laughs> that <Yeah>. explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I, um, yeah, I tried myself again in Fujichrome Provia 100F. I, I really enjoyed all the recipes, but this one stood out for me because I came across uh, the scene in the park where they just burned the field. That's quite a normal practice here in during winter when it's very dry and uh, the farmers burn the fields um, to the ground. And I loved how this, this era in the foreground kind of like survived the fire and this blue to me jumps out. And so I thought another good case for Fruity Chrome Provia 100F. So not only in the sky and the sea, but also in other parts um, of an image where you want the blue to pop. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. I just really like that one. Thank you. Oh, and it was uh, during, you know, I think it was midday 
pretty much. So, yeah. So it's not always the best time to take photographs, but Fuji Chrome Pro Via 100F um, still delivers really nice images. Yeah, it does. It does really well for toning down like an overly warm scene. So sometimes like uh, certain lighting is just like much too warm and it, it makes it mu a lot more cool, um, gives it a whole different feeling. Yes. Cool. And on to our last challenge, which was that we want to create an image that you um, end up printing. So here mm -hmm. is your image, which is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and I, I, I still got to print it. I have um, um, being lazy, slacking off. Uh, uh, it will it will be printed, um, <laughs> but it's not yet. <laughs> well, you must print it because it's definitely yeah. worthy of a print. It is a stunning uh, rolling heels uh, scene. Um, and uh, like yeah. we also mentioned before, um, something blurry in the foreground just to really give the image a lot of depth. So I absolutely yeah. uh, love this image. It's definitely eye catching. Uh, but yeah. That, uh, yep. uh, yeah, the uh, extinct volcano in the in the background there, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the hills and the in the and the layers and all that kind of stuff. Yes, and um, it just goes to show, even though we we all know how good it is to print our images, it is it is challenging. Uh, it is not something that most of us still practice on a regular basis, which is why we. Uh, thought of that challenge and um, yeah and it just goes to show that it is not easy uh, to do this and um, yeah that we are also just human <laughs> thanks Carl yes but <laughs> don't forget <laughs> thank you Stanley yep. <laughs> <laughs> just in case go have it printed yep. yes all right and then um, here is uh, my rendition of Coda Color VR, um, also mm -hmm. um, a landscape scene uh, that I came across, and I really enjoyed how this um, hut just, you know, in this orange wood, just kind of like jumps out um, at me. Yeah, it's an amazing picture. So I thought, so I thought, let me try and see how um, it looks printed. It mm -hmm. was not, um, you know, it also took me a while and it took Stanley a while to <laughs> motivate me to go and have it printed. And um, I did. I actually did print it and I've got the print here and I want to show you guys proof. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'll show you in an analog kind of way uh, that I have printed this image. There you go. And um, yeah, now I'm going to find a place where I hang it up. And it really uh, was a nice process. Uh, it was also a good reminder that printing is very different from anything else digital. So I can only recommend you do this because the moment you print something, you realize uh, that you're printing to a different medium, that you need to have so many things to consider from an aspect ratio to you know, really checking your, your histogram, really communicating with the printer. And, you know, now that the image is in the frame, it's like, it's an accomplishment. Um, and it doesn't really matter what the image is. It needs to be important for you. And it doesn't matter what everybody else says. Maybe it is um, a real, you know, piece of art. Maybe it is a reminder of you of something special. It's really regardless of what it is, but you should have it printed because it makes a huge difference. Yeah, and, and this picture here looks like it would be a great like uh, jigsaw puzzle or something. <laughs> yeah, especially the top <laughs> right corner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be hard. You know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what makes it challenging. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, but these are these are the challenges that we set for everyone, and we you know go ahead and and 
try our best to also, you know, do it justice. And let's see how everybody else feed. So we had a couple of submissions. Um, some people send us notes, text notes, or um, put a document into a folder that is being uploaded. So we get information, background information on the images, or people put it in the file name. So the file names get really long, but that really doesn't matter. We get the information to, you know, what, um, what the story behind the image is. So this is how we got to find out um, what you submitted these images for. Am I making sense? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, then let's jump in. We had a submission from Dan, who submitted mm -hmm. this image in 1970s summer. And he, um, he titled it The Fires. Um, now I'm. Um, the, the, there were wildfires uh, recently, and this is clearly where the smoke is coming from in the air. And yeah, so obviously it's difficult to photograph in this. And yeah, a couple of years back uh, when I was in Utah. Uh, there was uh, wildfires like in Oregon and Washington and California, and for a month or more, there was it was just every day it was smoke, thick, uh, you could smell it. Um, ash, you would, ash would get on your car and stuff. And uh, even though the fires were really far away, uh, it was affecting us similarly. What you see here, and it made photography very difficult. Um, you know, sometimes the sunsets or sunrises would be absolutely fantastic uh, because of it. Uh, but for the most part, it was extremely challenging for photography. But uh, Dan Allen captured a pretty cool image uh, mm. using the smoke. You know, it's uh, it's definitely gives a unique rendering that uh, you wouldn't have otherwise. Yes. And he says that it is Lake Placid with a 1980s Olympics way. Okay. So I... A good monumental place for something like this. Mm -hmm. Definitely well captured. Thank you. Cool. And then we have another submission by uh, Peter Sands, who sent us another version of a 1970s summer image. And I couldn't agree more that this is just, you know, transporting you right back. Um, to me, even though I was laughed at, but I have to say it again. To me, this is the perfect James Bond opening scene. Um, and then the camera moves to the boat and finds James Bond. And, you know, if you know how James Bond movies start, then you know the rest. But this is, this is what it reminds me of. Yeah, and, and, and Peter said that this was like noon, harsh noon lighting. And that's... Yes. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we're out a golden hour, out in the morning, out in the evening. Uh, but then in the middle of the day, you kind of put the camera away because the lighting isn't as good. But uh, but Peter demonstrates here that even at noon, uh, in harsh lighting, you can still get a good uh, photograph. Yes, absolutely. So this is a perfect, another perfect example, which is great. Mm -hmm. And to the third perfect example, a, a very eye-catching uh, mountain landscape by Enrico. Um, maybe he was driving on these mountain roads <laughs> when, <he's, Yeah. laughs> when he was commenting. But I absolutely, absolutely love this. I think it's amazing. He mentioned uh, to us that uh, it was a very difficult day. It was very overcast but um, the, the clouds were moving in and out of uh, the, the sun, so the light was changing all the time. But he managed to, to capture the light and sunspot on this hut just uh, yeah. briefly for a moment. So yeah, it and it's, it's a great example of the decisive moment, mm -hmm. you know, capturing the image at just the instant that the light is the best. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it... If I own that cabin, I would want this picture on my wall, you know, yes. uh, printed very big. I hope Enrico does print this picture. It's a, it's a really nice capture. Yes, we were a little bit 
uh, tone between putting this into the um, unfavorable light where he submitted it to or into the next section, which is, you know, print your image, but we kept it there, but it needs to be in both. He really needs to print this. <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think that's a good segue into the next, um, into the next challenge where we have asked you to submit an image that you would like to print. And yeah, you've been a bit uh, timid. Maybe it's something new. We, we all know um, how challenging this could be. But we had a one submission, so we want to give a big round of applause. Uh, to Joe, who sent us this image and, and said that he will uh, definitely print this when he's back from holiday. Okay, yeah, it's a beautiful picture. I love the the, the layers with the, the fog and clouds and it's it's almost black and white. Uh, you would almost think it was a toned black and white image, but it's color. And uh, it's just uh, the tones in it are just really, really beautiful. Uh, it's a great job by Bo. And uh, we had a conversation, uh, Natalie and I, uh, just uh, we noticed that the picture that she printed, the picture that I'm going to print, and the picture that Bo's going to print were all captured on a code of color BR. Yes. 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 That is, I, I find that so interesting. And even more interesting is that a lot of you actually shot in uh, Coda Color VR, even though you have newer cameras. I, I had a look, most of you who submitted images actually shoot on an X-T5 and X-T4. So you can shoot in a 1970s summer, which I feel is fairly similar in, in the qualities. Uh, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, Richie. But no. I felt like if you don't have an Xtrans 5 sensor, you can definitely go with Coda Color VR and you get similar kind of a quality. But, yeah, if, um, you're after that, if you're after that look, that 1970s summer look, and you don't have a camera that has the nostalgic film simulation, then yeah, Coda Color VR is a really good alternative. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I felt like maybe you were all comparing the two recipes, how they, how they render, that you shot with both of them. But be that as it may, um, it's great to see that so many of you um, shot in, um, in this uh, recipe as well. Um, yes, yeah, so let us know what you think. You know, let us know your opinions. Uh, if you shot both, what did you what did you think? Did you like one better than the other? Did you think they were similar? Um, did you like these recipes? Is there one you didn't like? Was there one you loved? Uh, definitely uh, type away and let us know what you thought. Yeah, please do. And I'm just going to quickly look through a couple of more comments that you added to some of the images. Sometimes we're a little bit behind um, in the... Oh, this is not the right one. Um, um, the comments come in a little bit later, so uh, I don't want to take away uh, from all the applauses that are coming from the audience. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal uh, with, all your, with all your comments. So thank you. It is highly appreciated. And also just to know that we are talking about the images. This is in no way a criticism. We encourage you to share images with us, even if you are newer to photography. It is a great exercise um, to, you know, keep shooting and learning. So we would love to encourage you and to be a platform to help you do that. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing, nothing quite like practice that makes perfect. Yeah. Cool. And that's yep. concluding um, the amazing images uh, that we wanted to share with you and discuss with you. If you have any questions regarding this, any questions to travel photography and um, anything that you want to discuss, please shout our way. Let us know. Uh, we are here to answer those questions. Um, if you're watching this as a recording, you can still write it in the comments. We will make sure that we answer all your questions that you may have. 
um, around this and other topics to the recipes or whatever it is that you would like to get answers to. Um, yep, we're here for you. So uh, let us know uh, what we can do to help you. Yes, please do. And um, yeah, and then if there are no more questions, uh, oh, we... Pardon? I think there was a question uh, I saw in the comments about... There was uh, a question. Yes, you're absolutely right. There was. Let's have a look. Um, it was around printing. Printing. Yes. Thank you, Richie. Let's go back. It was around printing. And we were talking about printing yeah. this image. And it was Joe who asked if I made any adjustments before printing. Mm. I didn't. I, um, I simply... I simply printed it. What I did is that I made sure that my histogram was correct. Because what is tricky in printing compared to looking at it on a screen that if you, if you edit or if you look or if you download an image um, onto your phone, onto your computer, onto an iPad, they all have different brightnesses. So especially I get that, uh, I get caught sometimes um, on my phone because I don't necessarily always check how bright my screen is. So if I download the image and I think it's a bit too bright, then I would maybe put a vignette around it or slightly darken it. If you then print it, uh, the image will obviously print too dark. So it's, it's quite tricky um, to do that. But if you, I recommend that you go and find a good printer who helps you in the printing process. Most, I think most one hour labs, they just kind of like, you know, just shoot the, the prints out and they don't necessarily give you any recommendations. But if you go to a good print lab, it will help in the experience. There's nothing worse than, you know, you've just mustered all the courage to go and print your images and then it's some, you know, one hour photo lab that maybe, you know, has bad chemicals or whatever even in the, in the prints, which does happen. And then you are disappointed and then you don't print again. So if you, if you print, go and maybe ask in, in forums or whatever about a good printing lab in your area and go and ask them for advice in case you, you're not sure. Yeah, so it, you want to look for like a camera shop in your area uh, that like a legit camera shop and uh, a lot of times they'll have a lab in there that does a good job or there's places you can send it off to. Um, uh, I, I use the, a lot of times uh, Adorama, but um, they changed the name of their printing service. It's like Printique or something like that now. I forget what they call it. Um, Bay Labs is another one that I've used and had good results. Uh, for me, um, a lot of times it will have as an option in your settings to, uh, to, for the lab to make adjustments or not. And I usually uncheck the make adjustments. I don't want them to make adjustments to mine. I want to, to print exactly as it is in the file. Uh, but if, uh, but you have to, as Natalie said, be careful that the picture is as you want it to be. Uh, not too bright or too dark um, because if you if you ask them not to make an adjustment and then it is ends up being too dark or too bright then it'll show up in the print that way yeah um robert is also mentioning that he has a small uh, printer that he prints at home i guess and uh yeah you need to learn uh, the device that you're printing with. It can become extremely uh, tricky. And if you are someone who prints uh, for, you know, for work, then it gets uh, very intricate. Then you would have uh, a print a printer who you work with all the time and you fine tune a lot. I don't think it's necessarily, um, you know, that... Um, where we where we are at or the, or the kind of images that we want you to print at this stage 
doesn't necessarily be that complicated because it also can be quite overwhelming. But um, just, just for you to be aware. Uh, I do have a question for you, Natalie, regarding all this. Um, I always shoot in uh, sRGB um, and, and I print in sRGB as well. Do you print, do you shoot and print in Adobe RGB or G, yeah, or do you do S or GB or do you do one for sh shooting and one for printing or? So I, I shoot and print in S RGB. We yeah. had this conversation somewhere in some group in, in some comments. I don't remember exactly where it was, uh, where we were talking about this. And, um, so I had a conversation with a professional who prints uh, for work. So that's his, his main business. And he shoots in, in Adobe um, RGB. He shoots for print only. And he, you know, he has a standing relationship with the lab. They have, you know, he's got their color chart and they've got his settings. And uh, yeah, so it gets really fine tuned to make sure that every single color comes out exactly the way he um, wants. Uh, but m most of us don't. Uh, we, we mostly shoot to have images displayed on screens of all sorts of kinds. And this is where sRGB is a lot more, um, is, is the right um, color profile to shoot in. And you can definitely print this as well. Uh, you just need to make sure that your print lab, depending on who you're printing with, if you're printing with a professional print lab that prints a professional photographer's work, they will ask you all these questions and they may want you to change the color profile of your image. But if you tell them you, this is sRGB and you want it printed like this, they will, other labs will not ask you because they just assume that this is um, an sRGB image and that is fine. If you find out that the colors are funky, it's possibly to do with that. I think, Richie, you've had this experience before. Yeah, especially I, I had when a you bad then, experience. Yeah, yeah especially when you then experience. want to show it on screen as well. Yeah, this is back a long time ago. It kind of was new to digital uh, photography-ish. Um, and I came across somewhere an article saying that you should... Uh, that Adobe RGB is far superior to sRGB and you should always shoot in it. And so I did. And, um, and, and a couple things happened. Uh, one is I printed the pictures at, uh, at a, you know, not a real professional lab, uh, but um, I would say like a kind of lower end lab, um, kind of like one of those one hour kind of labs. And they, they, the colors were way weird on it and uh, they looked ugly. I, of course, I was able to figure that out after some sleuthing and, and, and get that fixed, having it printed somewhere else. And it was fine. The, the other problem was, is that, um, I was posting these pictures online. Um, and, uh, I, I was getting some feedback from people that they, the pictures just looked really weird or the colors were ugly and, and all this stuff. And I didn't, I didn't know why, but it's because, uh, I would find out that not all browsers and stuff back then, I'm sure it's different now, but, but back then, not all browsers and stuff could display the Adobe RGB. And so, um, yeah, I, it made me want to give up on digital photography. This is ages ago. I was still kind of in the limbo between digital and film. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is a nightmare having to do with digital photography. So I'm going to quit, but I didn't, I stuck with it. Here I am today. Uh, but I always, ever since then, sRGB for me, and I've printed very large. I've printed two foot by three foot from Fujifilm files, sRGB, and they look great. So don't be afraid um, to, to just print them uh, without making adjustments. Yeah, fantastic. And we've got a few more questions. So let's, um, let's have a look at those. Um, mm -hmm. They um, no longer have to do with printing. I think uh, we're quite, you know, I think we're quite good on that answer. 
We have a question from Dan. He wants to know about the app and he would like to add some keywords to each recipe. Yeah, I've, I've looked into that. I've had a lot of feedback um, along those lines and uh, it's, it's very challenging because um, like I have my opinions on what a recipe is good for, such as portraits or, or sunset or something like that. Uh, but somebody else might have a completely different opinion on it. And so I, I might love it for that. Somebody else might hate it. Uh, so trying to rate recipes for each like situation or genre uh, is, is a challenge. And also it's just a huge volume of recipes. So you're talking about like 300 recipes, um, you know, going through each one and saying it, it's good for these categories. That's good for this lighting, for this scenario. Um, it's a, it's a project that I've started on and, um, and just really got overwhelmed with. So, um, it's something I want to do, but it is that it's such a huge task to, to try and, and do all that. I, I guess if I had started, you know, at the beginning kind of category, categorizing it, I, you know, would be a lot better off than trying to do it 300 recipes deep. But, um, but I think that the other challenge is, is saying, well, this is my opinion on what it's good for, but then having somebody else completely disagree with that assessment. So uh, those are the things that I'm tackling, but yeah, I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the suggestion, Dan. And I've got a question for you regarding this, uh, Richie, because I had this conversation with someone else around that and they were saying it would be, would it be possible that you can add your own keywords or tags to a recipe and then filter that? And that's a good idea. I, that's something I can look into. Um, like, uh, if, yeah, that's not, that's not a bad idea at all. The, the one, the one thing about that is how the app is set up right now, um, is you wouldn't be able to share that across devices. So if you put keywords in on your iPhone and you also have it on your iPad, it wouldn't carry over to the iPad. Um, but, um, yeah, that's not a bad suggestion at all. That's I'll <laughs> definitely look into that and see cool. what can be done. Nice. And then you can let us do the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, there is another question. And that is from Carl. He wants to know about lenses. Travel lenses. He's tried the 18 to 300 and no dust on the sensor. <laughs> yeah. What, what it means if you have a zoom lens is that you're not changing lenses all that often, if at all. And then obviously your sensor doesn't get exposed to dust or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, if you if you enjoy zoom lenses, I um, yeah, d d different minds, um, different likes, I guess. Um, I I shoot with zoom lenses, funnily a lot for for work for events, but when I shoot my own stuff, I usually shoot on prime lenses. What about you, Richie? I almost always shoot on primes. Uh, I, I do have a few zooms uh, and I don't use them very often. Uh, I have the, like the 18 to 55 F 2.8 F4. I have the, uh, I have the uh, 100 to 400. Um, I have a 10 to 24. Um, uh, there's another one, uh, uh, one of the, the inexpensive ones. I forget what it is. But um, I have always preferred primes over zooms, and that's just my preference. Um, and uh, I don't know, everybody's different, and everybody has to find what works for them. And if I would say if an 18 to 300 millimeter lens works perfect for you, then that's, that's amazing. You found something that, uh, that, that is your gear, right? Mm. Um, and each person has to do that for themselves. Um, but for me, I personally prefer primes over zooms, but of course, then I get dust on the sensor. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, that's great. Exactly. Um, 
Thank you, Carl, for, for this question. Uh, Jerry mm -hmm. also just wanted to um, strengthen the case about keywords. So mm -hmm. he also thinks that would be helpful. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then lastly, uh, just to put uh, Pilot Pete here on the screen as well, um, I think he was commenting on uh, Coda Color VR. Uh, he will uh, try to use this recipe. This is great. This is exactly what oh, we've been yeah. speaking about. Now that you've seen lots of mm -hmm. examples, uh, you can uh, try it out for yourself because they're definitely, definitely worth testing. Awesome. Fantastic. This that's, has been that's absolutely why, That's why we're awesome. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for all the questions and uh, and for not holding back and a lot to think about and consider. You know, we were able to talk a pretty in depth about uh, printing, I guess, a little bit and uh, uh, maybe some future updates to the app to, to improve it. And um, you were able to, you know, share some recipes that might give you some uh, inspiration to try in uh, the coming days and weeks and stuff. So that's all really cool. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, let's uh, move along. We have two more uh, things to uh, quickly talk about before we wrap it up, okay. since um, unfortunately we didn't make our one hour <laughs> cut off, no. but we were having too much fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you're all still here with us. We want to quickly have a look at our poll results because we um, asked you two questions in this. Mm -hmm. So um, so we wanted to see how you all voted. And let's just have a look, see what you thought of um, you printing your images. Um, we wanted to know if you print regularly and um, I think um, we've had a response um, that, okay, there we go. This just took a moment to refresh. Okay, so thank you for voting. Uh, all right, sorry, we've just changed <laughs> the poll. It takes me a while to, to figure out what's on the screen. All right, so the first question that we asked was around the, the recipes. And mm -hmm. the poll we got, the, the, what you guys are thinking is that you prefer more different looks. Um, quite, yeah, it's quite uh, clear that we are needing to find a more different uh, variety in the recipes well, that we... Oh, no, it, it, it's do. all grayed out, but it doesn't show any votes for that one. That's as far as I can see. I got my... My little, uh, on my uh, camera, the little flip screen, I'm, I'm filming this yeah. on an XT4 and the little flip screen is sticking out in the way. But yeah, it looks like half the people said fabulous. I love the variety. Um, Sorry, I'm just refreshing. Yeah. And then okay. uh, I always find one I like and then a little less. I never know which one wants to choose. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. There was clearly a glitch in the system. <laughs> it was, okay. yeah. But I'm glad that I've refreshed this again. Uh, so, yeah, so we're not doing too badly. That's really nice to hear. Uh, we're always open for suggestions. So if you think that we should um, add different recipes, if there's anything that you're wishing for in particular, please let us know so that we can, you know, adjust that accordingly. And um, thank you all for, for voting and for um, giving us your... Um, your thoughts on this and um, uh, then we also asked you if you were printing we had this question uh, on the screen before so if we can move to the to the next poll this is the one thing I do not control <laughs> there we go and um, so let's have a look. Let me go and refresh that before I read something weird again. It just, the system takes a moment to pull all the questions in, or all the answers in, I guess. Okay, let's just give it yeah. one more second. Let's have another look. Yeah, it looks like it's just one response. Uh, and and, and uh, 
I would say that my response would be kind of in between, um, or maybe more like often, but not as much as I should, mm. or occasionally, but having in years, I have, I have, you know, in the, in the last couple of years printed more than in the past, but I would say it's still only occasionally, you would think that my walls would be covered all the way around with beautiful <laughs> photos that I've uh, captured, uh, uh, over the years and stuff. But, uh, um, I actually only have right now, um, four of my pictures, uh, up on the walls. Um, and then a few pictures from other people, but, um, uh, yeah, right now it's just, just four. So I, I definitely need to be printing more often than I am. Well, you will be having a trip to the print shop very soon. <laughs> yes. So soon it'll be five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said earlier, I'll only encourage you to to try mm -hmm. it out. It is a really cool um, experience. Yeah. Thank you very much for playing along and for giving us your your thoughts on this. Um, someone else just voted, and they clearly print a lot. That's great. Um, it's nice to hear. And yeah, just keep it up and uh, and let us know how you go and maybe you want to share with us what kind of recipes you print with do you print soc mm -hmm. or do you anything else uh, with your images we would always love to get some extra feedback yeah thank you but um in addition to that um whenever we uh, get your images we also give away a 12-month subscription to the fujix weekly app Mm -hmm. And we are going to draw out of the pool of everyone who's uploaded. As long as you upload at least one image, you're eligible to set a chance to win. And um, yeah, if you haven't uh, joined us before in this live poll, uh, we have our Wheel of Fortune uh, that we are, uh, we've got prepared. And everyone who submitted is here, ready, waiting. And uh, let's see um, who we can give away a awesome uh, FujiX Weekly app subscription for 12 months, uh, which apparently, I believe, is soon going to offer the option to tag your recipes with your <laughs> own <laughs> tags. <laughs> Sorry. Let's have a look-see who we can make a winner tonight. And there it, it is. is Jonathan Martin. Yeah. Excellent. Congratulations. Uh, you are the proud owner of a 12-month subscription of the FoodieX Weekly app. Please get in touch with us so that we can hook you up. Thank you for submitting uh, your images and thanks to everyone else for submitting. It has been uh, phenomenal as always. Um, and um, yeah, we couldn't do this without you and uh, we are happy to... Uh, have you all here and tune in all the time and support us with all your images. And yep. a good reminder that if you um, stick around for a little bit after the show, you can go straight to the viewer slideshow, which is uh, now available to view as well, where you can see all the images that have been submitted. And you can really indulge in all sorts of travel photography um, uh, yeah images and scenes yeah definitely watch it definitely as soon as the show is over uh not that you haven't been here long enough but uh take a few minutes to, to see all of the pictures that were submitted yes but thank you so much for sticking around uh this is the end of the show uh we are going to be back next thursday which is the third of august uh, we are going to introduce a new theme we're taking we're leaving travel behind we are finally, finally, finally focusing on black and white and black and white only. It's going to be a feast of black and white. <laughs> Monaco. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. Um, it's been in the making for a long time. So make sure that you uh, join us again next Thursday, same time, same place. Don't, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, don't forget about it. And um, yeah, to uh, make sure that you remember 
uh, you can uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to make sure that you get a reminder when we are going live, when we are publishing new stuff and it will help, help us a great deal. And if you want to, while you're at it, share it with friends and other people who also um, could benefit from what we're talking about and um, showing on this channel. Well, it's been uh, it's been really great, and uh, uh, glad you guys could all join us today uh, with all your questions and comments and uh, the pictures you submitted and everything. It's uh, so wonderful, and uh, we do this show for you. And it's so good to see uh, all the people watching and uh, you know all the participation. So uh, it's definitely sad to to leave, even though we've been here for over an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richie, for all your time. Thanks to everyone who's been sticking around. It's been a absolutely uh, phenomenal. Um, yeah. We are going to do this again next week. Uh, can't wait. And um, yeah, for now, you have yourselves a super awesome day. A fantastic um, evening or whatever time it is right now for you. We are saying goodbye and see you soon. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful time and uh, look after yourselves. Good night and thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy the show.